Hello everyone, thanks for your time and thanks HIPI for making this possible. I'm going to talk about the project I've been working on, but I think it will be useful to put some theoretical basis first. So I'm going to start with a story. In Greek mythology, Carpus, symbol of fruit, is the son of Zephyr and Claris. Zephyr is the west wind and Claris is associated with flowers and spring. Zephyr and Claris with their son are a metaphor for nature. The west wind brings the spring which bears fruit. Calamus is the lover of Carpus, the son of Meander, god of the Meander river, which is located in present-day Turkey. One day, while the couple was swimming in the Meander, Carpus drowned. Calamus lets himself be drowned out of despair, and his body turns into a reed a plant to which he gives his name in Greek. This plant is used for writing, but also as a musical instrument. The sound of the wind passing through the reed is interpreted as the sigh of lamentations. The word kalam entered the Arabic language through Latin in antiquity. It defines the instrument of writing with ink on paper, or even earlier the instrument of engraving on clay for cuneiform writing. I think this story of love and sorrow represents the human being's relationship with nature. Reed pen, a tool coming from the embodiment of the human body, becomes an extension of the hand for writing. The tool that immortalizes human being through writing. The handwritten forms show the connection of the human with the writing tool. This connection today can give a strong base of reference to the shapes made digitally and remind us where these forms come from. In recent years, the increase in the importance of multi-script typefaces is remarkable. Today, Arabic typefaces are increasingly sold by foundries. The economic potential of reaching people using other scripts besides Latin has drawn the attention of scholars to take a more profound look at Arabic type. But this recent practice requires the examination of predefined standards, beliefs, and terms. As a kid growing up in Iran, the way I learned the alphabet was like this. This might also be the case for the Arab countries. We are taught that each letter has four forms based on its position in the word. Initial, medial, final, and isolated form. But this is not really accurate and it is mostly based on how the movable type composes the text. Um, although the Arabic writing system is an alphabetic system, from a typographic point of view it behaves differently from Latin. In an Arabic script, letter attachments are not always a simple reunion of two graphemes meant to be attached. In most cases, the attachment of letters results in a change in the shape of the letters. The form of the letter varies depending on the previous and next letters it is attached to. Going back to manuscripts, in order to master the shapes of the letters in the context, the copyist or calligrapher fills the page with letters, either isolated letters that we call the mufradat or combination of two or more attached letters, murakabot. And these combinations do not necessarily form meaningful words. So these sheets are called siyamash. At first, they were practice sheets entirely covered with writing as a means to practice calligraphy while conserving paper. But later, they were collected and sold as an art form on their own. As we can see in reality, the medial, initial, and final forms of most letters almost never exist alone. Their existence and their forms depend on the letters to which they are attached to. For example, as you can see, the initial shape of the letter B or Ba in the Thulus style can have up to nine different forms. After the invention of movable type, most of these variations were reduced to a single form because of the technology's limitations and costs. But to get out of the imposed homogeneity, certain combination punches were casted. These combinations were called ligatures, based on Latin typography tradition. Ligature in Latin typography occurs when two or more graphemes that are meant to be separated 
are attached or joined together in one glyph. However, in Arabic type, the attachment of the letters is in the nature of the script. Therefore, ligature is not a suitable term. This historical document shows the difference between letter combination and ligature. As you can see, the two words are not meant to be attached. And it is a ligature that is occurring in here. In fact, the flexibility of the script allows you to have various combinations for the same word or phrase. A lot has been said on the impacts of movable type on Arabic script, and today a growing number of people feel the urge of looking back at manuscript and calligraphic references. But still most designers are not aware of the origins of today's Arabic typographic forms. In recent years, this problem has become more and more obvious as non-native designers try to experiment in Arabic. The references they base their work on are the computer phones which are casted from the movable type punches. Like the simplified Arabic in these photos, but in addition, you can see the same old annoying problem of detached letters. Arabic script always tried to fit itself into technologies not designed for it. Movable type was invented in the 11th century in China and in 15th century in Europe with the idea of separated letter blocks. And the same logic was transmitted to movable type as the Unicode system. While the Arabic script composition consists of elements and layers that are stacked on each other. Today, OpenType has made many of the Arabic script features and flexibilities possible, but still there is a big gap between what the script offers and what a user can achieve by typing on the computer. Among all the typesetting problems are the kerning problems, fixed baseline, fixed dots position, fixed diacritic length, straight line keshidas, etc., etc. These are the features with which the scribal could achieve the perfect type color and balance in the text. The question of tool and technology is an important factor in the development of the Arabic type. Advances in technology have not necessarily meant the evolution of Arabic script. Each time the tool was adapted to the morphology of these writing system, the reproduction of letter forms and texts have evolved and consequently the number of publications has increased. We can see this clearly by looking at the difference in adaptation of lithography compared to movable type. People who use Arabic script did not apply Gutenberg's invention for centuries. The Ottoman, Mughal and Safavid empires continued making books for at least three centuries by hand copying them. This was due to the fact that texts printed with European press were dramatically different from the manuscripts they used to read and were full of grammatical and spelling errors. Lithography, however, is in a way the direct extension of the manuscript. Handwritten forms could be produced simply with precision at low cost. Copying is the main skill for producing good lithographs. Its flexibility is the reason for its success in Arabic printing. Lithography was an effective way to accompany illustrations and decorations with texts. It allowed local printing shops to find economic independence as this technique does not require imported material or technicians. Actually, the rapid spread of this technique among the countries using Arabic script shows its relevance. Before the middle of the 19th century, lithography was democratized in India and South Asia, and local lithography workshops appeared everywhere. Lithography became a useful tool for publishing social and political statements in demonstrations against English colonization. In Iran, lithography made the printing press obsolete for about 20 years, and it was replaced by movable type only when the speed needed for printing newspapers became an issue. In the Indian subcontinent, lithography was not replaced by movable type as Nastaliq's typesetting was never really successful. 
Thus, school textbooks for learning to read and write do not have the same logic as in other countries. As you can see, the letter forms are taught in their combinations. The books printed with lithography today compose a big part of the Arabic script's heritage. One should consider the difference between a tool and technology. Technology is the sum of knowledge and practices in a field. The aspects of technology are determined by the structures of power, and technologies can be understood in their social and economic context. This is why the printing technology linked to the industrialization of Europe is not adapted to the needs of the countries which possess a non-Latin script and it persists as a dominant force over the colonized countries. In the digital era, this technological and cultural domination continues to persist in another form. In contrast, a tool is a device or implement, especially one held in the hand, used to carry out a particular function. Tools are made by the people to facilitate work or labor. After the reed pen, most of the tools used to transcribe Arabic script were invented by creators alien to this writing system. This imposed distortions and simplifications in the script. With the possibilities and accessibility of digital mediums, Tools that are more suited to this writing system are emerging slowly. Apart from the lack of type tools adapted to Arabic script, while working on my MA thesis, I realized how limited the credible research on Arabic type is. These two issues gave me the idea for my MA project. I started to work on an online platform dedicated to Arabic type. Well, it is a long-term ongoing project, obviously, and I present you its actual state and towards where I wish to go. Sawad Online Platform aims to support critical research and knowledge transmission in the field of Arabic type. By using the possibilities of web and digital mediums, Sawad also tries to develop and support applied and experimental tools adapted to the morphology of Arabic script. Sawad tools try to question the digital standards that are ignorant to characteristics of non-Latin writing systems. So, in the article sections, papers can be sorted according to different criteria, like date, author, language, and title. Then you can preview each item before opening it. You can see the table of contents and the summary. We have the choice to download the research in PDF format with a layout suitable for reading on a printed medium, or we can step into the unscreened reading space. So as you might know, comments margins are a very important element in Persian and Arabic manuscripts, as these books were unique. These marginal comments were written either by the author himself in order to correct or add to the information, or by other readers and researchers who had opinions on the text. Um, I have simulated this comments space for an active reading. The idea is that one can have access to his comments when returning to the website later, but also one has the choice to share his comments with other readers. For a more pleasant reading, you can choose the paragraph size. And also, you can change the type setting using variable form technology. You can change the weight, width, size, and line spacing. There is also night mode and highlight tool integrated. On the left, you can access the table of contents. Footnotes are visualized like this. 
and the images are floating and resizable. And by clicking on them, you can read their notes. Uh, in the tools section so far, I have developed two tools. Murakab, meaning compose, is an interactive tool for understanding the morphological changes of letters in combination with the other ones. An educational tool not only for type designers who are not native users of Arabic script, but also for native designers, as many of the combination forms are neglected in the national education systems today. Um, the other tool that was the initial idea of this project is Calamus. It is a read pen simulator on a touch screen device. In almost all touch devices, the touch area between the stylus and the surface is a single point. Therefore, a pen rotation cannot be understood by the device as the rotation of a point remains a point. This makes it difficult to trace letters. The problem becomes more important in Arabic script because the read pen rotates at every moment to make contrast. And also the read pen angle is very important for the different styles. So I tried to solve this problem by integrating two touch points. The same way we attach two pens for sketching letter forms. To my knowledge, in just one expensive brand, by using a sophisticated technology, the pen rotation is considered by the tablet. My aim was to make a web tool that can be accessible on any browser and on any touch device. Well, I'm so bad at calligraphy and this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, here I'm trying to write a Farsi word in Nastalio style. Tracing can be done by two fingers. For a more accurate result, I have made two simple stylus prototypes. One with fixed width and one with variable width. Calamos can be used for lettering and also type design. The idea is that once you draw a shape, you can modify it by moving the nodes and curves and then exporting the shape for use in graphics or type software. Um, but these features are not implemented yet completely as I am still working on them. Um, Calamos is also an educational tool to learn concepts like angle and contrast. And also with ink mode, we can simulate the impact of writing speed on ink density. Today, the only way to have various combination forms in an Arabic typeface is to create lots of ligatures. Uh, this tool can provide a better understanding of these combination forms and also a faster workflow. And as you can see, apart from this, Calamos offers a different form of interaction with touch devices and the possibilities are endless. Personally, I find it kind of satisfying to play around with this. There is also a video section in the platform where I try to gather the video resources on Arabic type 
with a critical perspective. Actually, one of the reasons for sharing this platform with you is to invite you to participate in this project by publishing your papers or your videos on Sabbat. Also, as my coding skills are limited, if there is anyone who likes to collaborate in developing these tools further and make them accessible to everyone, please do contact me. Thank you so much. So, hello again. I hope uh, you like the presentation. Thanks for your comments. So kind of you, glad that you liked it. There were some questions, uh, reminds me of this tool. I don't know this tool, I will check it out. Um, oh yeah, I see, it's so impressive, yeah. And Oli, uh, you asked me if it is um, available. Actually, it is available online and there is a link. But as it is not completely done yet, I, I, I prefer to make it com more complete and then publish it. But it is usable right now, especially the Calamus tool. But you cannot export the forms. Right, right now, you can just write them in um, ink mode or in, um, in the normal mode, typ typography mode. But you cannot just modify, modify the, t the forms and export them. Um, actually, I am kind of trying to figure out different kinds of coding to approach it because it is getting complicated and, not, and I'm not a really uh, a computer engineer or programmer. So um, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it will be available soon. But if anyone wants to try it, you can just send me a message and I will just give you the link. There is no problem. So if there is any questions, I'm here to answer you. And if, even if someone wants to talk or anything, I can just open your, uh, I don't know if I can, but I think I can open your camera or the moderator we can do that. So you can speak. Yeah, sure. I'll send you the link. Actually, the link is kind of complicated. Let me just see. Yeah, re please, I remind you again that um, this is not really complete, so some parts will not work completely fine. It can be used on any touch device, uh, on, on phone, or but phone is not really, the, the screen is small, so it will be better if you try it on a tablet or something. Uh, yeah, then as I said in the video, uh, I have seen HI, in HIPI people uh, finding collaborations and finding people to work with, and I'm just trying to use this opportunity to share this so that maybe we can collaborate with anyone who is interested in, in this project, especially in the coding section. You're welcome, Sebastian. Any other questions? I will be answering the pleasure. Anyways, if if after this, if we call it a day, after that we can just hang out in the hangout room and you can talk there more freely and ask your questions. There is no problem. Yeah, exactly. And 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 uh, please share with me your experience with this. Uh, if you use that, please share me what you think about your experience, user experience. It is not perfect yet. I, I told you it is a very long term project, but I will be glad to have your feedback. Okay. Bye.
Yeah, actually, the pen I have uh, made, it is like um, like a big one. You can make it more smaller, the, the, the distance between them, but there is a limit for this distance because the touch screens, um, if it is so close, these two, they cannot differentiate two points and they think that this is one point. So there is a limitation. Uh, we can make it smaller, but not so much. Yeah, there is, a diff there, there is this problem of a space. And this is why I have to integrate different pages in this platform. Maybe we cannot just make this smaller, the letters, but we can make different pages. So we can just, uh, between tabs maybe, uh, switch between tabs or export them and keep them or just turn the page. So this is the solution I was thinking about. Uh, oh, yes, the question. I didn't see that, sorry. About Keshidas, uh, what is the best way to handle them in OpenType? Uh, this is a very good question. Actually, in OpenType, um, um, before this, before the variable phone technology, there was just a straight lines. It is with Control J, we can have a straight lines for the Keshidas. Um, I remember Sahara Afshar, uh, I think she's in here as well. Uh, she had a very good uh, presentation a couple of years ago in HIPI, and she proposed a kind of using variable font for having uh, organic and uh, curved Keshidas. And uh, the project is actually, uh, she did with, um, with uh, Jose, I don't remember his name, sorry, I'm, I'm so bad at names. Um, so uh, the project is, available on GitHub and it is a very good initiative and uh, maybe in the future we can have this used completely in the phones. Uh, I mean, um, you can just use the variable phone to extend the, yeah, uh, extend the Keshidas, uh, but it is not functional completely yet in the softwares. Uh, the other option is that some of the type designers do that is that they, uh, design different alternative for the letter forms. They design one letter forms, normal and one more elongated, one more. And uh, so that with the open type, when you, when you put the Keshidas, automatically it replaces them with that. With that. But this is a very, very big, um, very big uh, issue because you have to actually design two or three alternative for each word, each letter. So. Yeah, not a really functional solution yet, but these are the things that are proposed. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It, it is uh, available. That's right. You're welcome, sir. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, open type has solved many of the problems of Arabic type, but it is not there yet. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I think I we can call it a day. I will not just make you stay more than this. Um, and we can continue having this chat. We can talk and discuss on the Hangout room if you're interested. Thank you, everyone. It was a very good experience. And uh, hope to see you write to me about your experiences and feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day.